It's not a quick fix and it's, it's not just taking a pill and getting that magic solution. It's a journey and it's lifestyle habits. Welcome to the Girlfriend Doctor Show. I'm Dr. Anna, and I'm excited to be with you today. You know, there are so many things, obstacles we face in life. What about turning midlife? What does midlife actually mean? And there's so much fear around menopause and aging, what that means for us, how our body changes. There's the whole issues about weight gain. And are we really living our truth? Are we really living our purpose? Are we where we want to be at this stage of our life at half a century in our 50s? What does it feel like for you? And so, you know, these issues come up over and over again. And it did for me too, that weight gain without doing anything different, that whole career change in my late 40s, not something we expect to be doing, let alone me as a single mom, just having a complete burnout and career change. And I know that many, many of you deal with it too. And you know what I'm here to talk about, about breezing through menopause into our second spring so we can live the next half of our life just joyously, together, connected in the best health of our lives. Speaking of which, I have found this infrared yoga center. It is called Ritual One Yoga here in Dallas. And they have infrared plates. So you're heated basically from the inside out. And I have never, ever sweat so much in my entire life. I feel better now physically than I have in at least a decade since I last did my sprint triathlon. I think I was 43 when I did that triathlon. So, you know, I had to check that box and I don't think I've ridden my speed bike maybe once or twice since. I've got to get back on it one day. But anyway, you know, I mean, these are things like I'm now addicted to this hot yoga class. I'm so excited about it. And it's really a good place to be. It's really a good place to be for me who, you know, never wants to go exercise, but I'm always glad that I did. So yeah, we're going to hit on these topics. And I think definitely let's hit on what happens. Like what happens? Why does our weight start shifting start, why do we start gaining weight without doing anything different? And um, I have a special friend, a good friend, and actually she's the author of this book, Life is Not a Race, It is a Journey, and she is just an amazing woman. So she's a friend of mine, a friend to the Girlfriend Doctor community. She is a coach, and she has done so much in helping women achieve, women and men, athletes, elite athletes, achieve their highest potential. So I'm really excited to bring Debbie Potts onto the couch here at the Girlfriend Doctor Show. Hey, Debbie, how are you? Welcome. I'm great. I wish I'm sitting on the sofa next to you, but I'm in my time. office somewhere else. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Next time. You know, one of the things that you write about and you help people through is that weight, that weight piece, right? And even yourself as a, you know, elite athlete, right? Struggled with yeah. this and this, that midlife. And I know your birthday, you're turning 50 this year. Is that right? Actually, I say five zero. I haven't been able to say that full word. <laughs> five zero. <laughs> embrace it. Embrace it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, you know, struggled with weight without even eating differently or and changing my exercise. I was training for Ironmans and competing at a high level in my age group. And I kind of hit this burnout system in my body. Suddenly I was fatigued and I gained 30 pounds really quickly. And I felt like everyone was looking at me thinking I must have just quit working out and started eating junk food sitting on the sofa all day watching movies and it yeah, wasn't pizza and beer you yeah. know I mean what were <laughs> I know I was embarrassed so that was part of you know added on to every other stress that was going on my body it's like you're embarrassed to be walking around and feel like everyone's talking about you so yeah I gained weight without even changing my healthy eating and my exercise plan so it is possible to get insulin resistant without changing what you're eating <laughs> Yeah. And so, I mean, that is, I mean, it's defeating. When that happened to me, it was like 20 pounds overnight without doing anything different. I'm 48 or turning 48. And that was like that, you know, the brain fog swept in, the weight gain, the irritability. For me, it was all of those things. And I write about that in my books, The Hormone Fix and Keto Green 16. 
And you talk about your journey in your book, Life is Not a Race, Life's a Journey. I love that. I always like to say that it is about, it is about the journey, right? Versus yeah. even the destination. So when you were dealing with this and that, you know, and that tra trauma, I mean, it's really traumatic. You feel like your body's betrayed you. So how mm -hmm. did you reverse this? You know, it's, it's taken a long time. That started in 2013, eight years ago and it was in March and I just struggled trying to figure out what was going on. I was in a coaching programs myself to be health coach and different people were speaking at this seminar is that about heart rate variability. And, you know, the Dave Asprey was speaking back then about bulletproof coffee and we're talking about fasting and cold thermogenesis and all this stuff. And, and then I realized, you know, something's wrong with me. And I, I started going down this path, trying to get help, trying to get answers. But what I learned probably more recently is that it's, it's not a quick fix. And it's, it's not just taking a pill and getting that magic solution. And no one else could do, fix the problem for me. I had to change my lifestyle habits and my ways. I was looking for what, you know, lab tests and get supplements. And I, you know, saw eight, nine different people trying to get some results and you know i learned the hard way and that's kind of why i do what i do now to help people realize it's it's a journey and it's lifestyle habits along with getting the right functional lab to right nutrition program for your body and supplements as needed but not just think i'm going to out supplement my way without changing my lifestyle habits yeah. And you had really healthy exercise routines and lifestyle habits. So how did you shift that? What's your day look like now? <laughs> well, very different. I mean, I was training, you know, for Ironman Hawaii, I just finished. And so I was training for marathons and 50K trail runs in my off season. <laughs> I got off Ironmans and I was always wow. training, but, and I was, you know, personal trainer and teaching classes. And so I was always exercising and that was probably a little bit part of it doing too much as I say, it's that Goldilocks effect of everything is to find the right amount of, you know, stressor that's good for you and exercising too much is not good for you. <laughs> so more is not better. So now it's just, is I've learned over the years and finally, you know, this, it hasn't really been until the past year of the pandemic that forced us all to stay home and slow down and you can't go to your classes. You can't go to your usual things that you do unless it's outside on your, on your own and so now it's like okay i do some walking i've been doing yoga i started doing yin yoga at night a couple times a week and you know doing walk breaks at lunchtime. and i i've said to my clients that meal times don't mean eat it means move and get outside at sunrise watch the sunset so being more out active but i i now have to run and take two days of doing something else before I run again. So it's not just, you know, I used to bike run, swim, bike run four days a week, plus strength training and all this stuff. So I was doing two or three workouts every day. So I had to really modify that. Well, and that's such an important point, right? So it was too much that mm -hmm. you were doing and, and sh shifting up and some, so that's what I often tell women. It's, it's not necessarily about doing more, maybe about doing less. And when we can manage the cortisol, like if our workouts are burning us out and, you know, drying up our adrenals, right? Like really stressing out our adrenals, then that's going to cause a consequence of that, that weight gain, the inflammation, the kind of the lashback from not, you know, honoring the recovery time maybe that we needed. And I think that's essential for a lot of people that I know that aren't necessarily athletes, but we're type a triple a driven ambitious high performing individuals that we have that mentality that i have to do more and more is better and i think a lot of times we think that if i'm not doing something all the time i'm lazy i'm unproductive you know that i need to always be on and I, that's something we have to learn like if you are an overachiever you have to learn a little bit less and find that right amount that you can create that positive effect yeah, Debbie. So what are some of the red flags people should be looking for that they're actually doing too much? <laughs> well, I think the a big thing is, it's obviously can't ignore is that you can't sleep, right? You wake up, you might go to bed and then you wake up at that 2 a.m. time frame. It's usually when we have that 
cortisol or blood sugars up higher, the liver's activated and there's stuff going on in your body that you're just like staring at the ceiling going, why can't I fall asleep? And you just think it's morning time and it's, you know, middle of the night. And I think that's a big thing. That's why now I'm so serious about my sleep. And I finally got an aura ring to track my sleep and figure out what kind of hacks I can do to create a more effective results in my overall sleep quality. But that's number one is, is paying attention to your sleep and knowing. Oh, I've got to right. show you something because we're talking about sleep and I've been tracking my <gasps> sleep and this is my typical sleep. Like that was, that's like up and down. Actually, that's even mm-hmm. better than it used to be. But um, I've been, I formulated a sleep supplement. So now I'm getting this deep, deep sleep. And it's really good unless I drink. So yeah, I did with the supplement, without, with, you know, just really consistent without. (laughs) So really consistent results, like what a huge difference. I mean, it's a huge difference. And now I also found out that, you know, I can have a little white wine and it can be okay. But if I have red wine, it's disturbing my sleep. How bizarre Uh, is that? That's my latest um, research. (laughs) Well, I think that it is (laughs) N equals one, right? I mean, I say we're all unique by individuals. So that's exact you know, way to figure out what, what are my stressors? Because no one's the same, but you know, you can figure out what you can tolerate. That's not going to overfill your beaker of stress. And what is that tipping point before I'm going to have this breakdown and burnout, this whole domino effect of health issues. So, you know, sleep is a great thing to track. Luckily nowadays we can, you know, get a a aura ring or whoop band or whatever to track our sleep and then figure out like you're doing, how can I, I have the N equal one experiment and tag what things I used and how can I sleep better? And because that's that recovery and repair and detoxification, I think is so essential to our health. So that's a big one. But so red flag number one is your sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Number one that, and then I think, you know, I, I had a lot of weird food sensitivities. You know, I, I used to be able to have an apple, and I'm the better. And I could just like, everything was giving me a headache and instantaneously, it just, I reacted to things. So I got, I kind of found over time insulin resistant and weird food sensitivities just because of, you know, chronic stress impacts everything. So you create that constant stress response and nothing really knows how to shut off. So I think that was a big thing for me. Things did work well. The other big red flag was I have this a chapter in my book, I drank wine and I was fasting and worked out beforehand before drinking wine. And I was sick for a week and knowing my liver, knowing what I know now is liver was congested. I can process those toxins, the alcohol. So it's, you know, learning all these weird things were starting to happen. Injuries, like you suddenly have all these aches and pains and things that just slower recovery. That was another big thing. And then just depression, you know, just feeling poor self-esteem because everyone you feel like is looking at you and then you're embarrassed, but then you just can't find that same sense of joy and vitality and thriving every day. You just are struggling all day and you just, I had to have a nap in that afternoon. So that was another thing. Like, do you feel tired in the afternoon and, you know, you can't sleep at night and your circadian rhythm's all messed up? Mm-hmm. You know, and actually bring up that point, especially that sense of feeling embarrassed, worrying about what other people think. And, and this comes from, I had, I just interviewed Joan Rosenberg, Dr. Joan Rosenberg on the Girlfriend Doctor Show, and she's the author of 90 Seconds to Life You Love. And we talked about the issue of harsh self-criticism, how important it is to get that nasty bitch off our shoulder, seriously. And yeah. that in that in that framework, and when these are all things like many, every one of the things you mentioned, every one of these red flags brings down our energy, right? Slows down our metabolism, creates sludge in our body. Is that contributor? All of that without one mention about what we're eating, right? Creates that weight gain without doing anything different. So these these good habits we've had, and that was it for me. So that's how I, and that's how we connected through my keto green plan. But just like, you know, that concept of 
the right balance with intermittent fasting in the right way. And, mm -hmm. and that piece, but always say it is, it is maybe 25% about what we eat. And there's so much more to it. Well, we're going to be right back in a second to talk about uh, burnout and how we can prevent burnout, heal from burnout, because it's one of adrenal issues, adrenal issues, adrenal dysfunction or hypofunction or whatever it may be is one of the hardest things that that we treat as physicians because it is such a there is such a strong lifestyle piece to it and many of the things that that we will share kind of counterintuitive to what we're doing on a regular basis thank you for watching this video be sure to subscribe to my youtube channel here and get those notifications and comment below let me know your thoughts what you loved and what your action step is